everybody agrees. I mean, even you go on the Federal Reserve's website and uh, you look for the attributes of what what is money? What what does money have to be? And the very first thing is a store of value. And after that, they go medium of exchange, unit of account, and all these other things, fungible and divisible and all that other stuff. And so I came up with a couple of questions that you can ask somebody. If somebody is insisting, no, you're wrong, the euro is money. No, you're wrong, the dollar is money. Ask them, does money have to be a store of value? Is that one of its attributes? And if they say yes, ask them, is there inflation? And if they say yes, then ask them, aren't those two things mutually exclusive? If there is inflation, it is not storing value. And national fiat currencies, all of them on this planet now, are borrowed into existence and they're owed back plus interest. But the currency to pay the interest doesn't exist yet. It wasn't borrowed into existence. When it is borrowed into existence, you owe interest on that. So if you've got, if you start off with $1, and you're going to owe that plus a dollar's worth of interest. Uh, and then you borrow the second dollar to pay that interest eventually. Now you there's two dollars in existence. One is disappearing into the debt payment. But now you've got uh, four dollars. There's two dollars of interest and two dollars of debt. And one dollar is vanishing to pay off the principal on the first loan. Are you worried about the state of the economy? Feeling like the system is rigged against you? Then you need to hear what Mike Maloney has to say. That's right. Mike Maloney, the gold and silver guru, is pulling back the curtain on the financial world. You won't believe what he's about to reveal about. So stay tuned till the end. Understanding the concept of money can be tricky, but it's essential to grasp its fundamental principles. Mike Maloney, an American author, precious metals investor, and advocate for sound money principles, sheds light on these complexities. As a well-respected voice in the precious metals investing community, Mike has played an important role in educating the public about the value of sound money principles. His insights have helped many understand the intricacies of our monetary system and the importance of safeguarding one's wealth. Whenever you borrow currency into existence, whether it's from a bank or whether it's the central bank doing it, uh, the currency appears as a double entry bookkeeping thing. There's a debt and a uh, credit and, and these two things. When you make payments, you're extinguishing the debt that is owed on that balance sheet with the currency that you save up. And so the principal vanishes, but the interest is still owed. And so in our society, there are constantly more loans being made than there are paid. Uh, and so if, if you're talking about M2 uh, currency supply, you're talking about 90% bank credit. And uh, so you uh, go out and find a house that you want to buy. You need a million dollar loan. The bank says, okay, here's the loan document you have to agree to. They just check you out and see if, if they think you can repay it. And if they think so, then here's the loan document. Your signature hits that paper. They type, they imagine a million dollars into existence. We're going to loan you a million dollars on that house. They imagine that into existence, type it into your checking account. And at the same time, there is a debt owed to the bank on that loan. And so this brand new imagined currency just appears. And when you make the payments on the principal, it vanishes. Uh, however, you then have to save up some of the existing pool of currency that is always being borrowed into existence and pay the interest, which is the bank's profit and pays all of the employees and pays for the building and everything else. And it goes out and it circulates. But the point is those dollars that you're paying with they were borrowed into existence. They're somebody else's principal that was borrowed into existence just in the currency pool. The more you dig into the monetary system, the more you figure out that this is just such an illusion. It is just, it's, it's amazing. And it's really important right now for everybody to start learning this stuff because we're about to go through some enormous changes in just the next few years. This decade is going to see some upheavals in the monetary system. I do believe that gold and silver are going to be the big winners. Let's break down some key points shared by Mike Maloney to make it easier to understand. Firstly, when we talk about money, we usually think of it as something that stores value, right? That's because one of the main features of money is that it should hold its value over time. Think of it like this. If you have $100 today, you expect it to still be worth roughly the same amount a year from now. 
This ability to hold its value is what we call a store of value. Now, let's talk about inflation. Have you heard of it? Inflation happens when prices rise over time. So, for example, if a candy bar costs $1 today and next year it costs $1.10, that's inflation at work. But here's the thing, if there's inflation, it means that the value of your money is actually going down because you can't buy as much with it. So, in a way, inflation goes against the idea of money being a good store of value. But why does inflation happen? Well, one reason is because of the way our money system works. You see, most of the money we use isn't actually physical cash. Sure, we have paper bills and coins, but the majority of our money exists as digital numbers in bank accounts. When banks make loans or when governments create new money, they're essentially adding more of these digital dollars into the system. There's two forms of base currency. Uh, the first is the paper notes that are in your wallet, and that is an IOU from the Federal Reserve if you live in the United States, the ECB if you're in Europe, Bank of England if you're in, in England. So the paper notes are one form of base currency and they used to be the vast, vast majority of base currency. But then with quantitative easing, uh, Ben Bernanke, because of the mechanics of the way quantitative easing works, uh, base currency sort of gets trapped in this second form of the base currency, which is bank reserves. Bank reserves are a dollar that the public never sees, touches, or interacts with. It is something that is only used for interbank settlement and interbank loans. So they're borrowing and, and lending to one another. And then when, if I pay you uh, and I write a check to you and you go and cash that check, your bank is gonna contact my bank and tell them that you've got a check from me and they'll make a thousand dollars worth of uh, the imagined bank credit currency digits, these dollars that are just uh, digits, which the Bank of England actually states, these digits are reminders that the bank owes you an IOU. They aren't even an IOU. The bank owes you the paper note IOUs, the base currency IOUs. So there's about $2 trillion worth of base currency IOUs that we use in circulation paper notes. The banks use that for just interbank settlement. The vast majority of the currency supply, about 90% of M2, uh, is bank credit currency. So these are, like I said, digits in your bank account that remind the bank that it owes you that many central bank IOUs. Today's uh, fiat currency is a trade of nothing for something, which is a fraud. And, you know, they're inventing digits that are reminders to pay IOUs. And when they do, it dilutes the IOU supply that is out there, the M2 IOU supply, and, and thereby steals purchasing power from all the existing units of currency. Now, let's talk about something called base currency. Base currency is like the foundation of our monetary system. It includes physical cash like dollar bills, but it also includes something called bank reserves, which are digital dollars that banks use to settle transactions between each other. These bank reserves are kind of like behind the scenes money that most people never see or use. But here's where it gets interesting. When the government or the central bank creates new money, it doesn't always end up in your pocket. Sometimes it goes into things like the stock market or into big banks. And when that happens, it can cause prices in those areas to go up, like we talked about with inflation earlier. So imagine this, the government decides to create more money and uses it to buy bonds or other assets. Those assets end up in the hands of big banks or investors who then might use that money to buy stocks or real estate. As more money flows into these markets, their prices go up, which makes them seem like they're doing really well. But at the same time, prices for everyday things like groceries and gas might not go up as much because the new money isn't being spent there. This is why some people say that our current monetary system is a bit like an illusion. The money we use isn't always backed by something tangible like gold and its value can be affected by things like inflation and where new money is being spent. So, to sum it all up, when we talk about money, we expect it to be a good store of value. But with inflation and the way our monetary system works, that's not always the case. And understanding these concepts is important because it affects all of us, 
and how we manage our finances. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and leave a comment below letting me know your thoughts. And don't forget to subscribe for more useful content.